Hi guys, welcome to Well-Rounded Mama's YouTube channel. We have a really fun topic today. We're gonna to be talking about car seat safety. I am joined in with Rory. My name is Jillian. We are both birth professionals here at Well-Rounded Mama. I am a certified doula and student midwife, and Rory is in charge of our lactation and the majority of our childbirth education classes. But if you find this video helpful, we highly encourage you to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All the things to get this nice and promoted and out into the community with that. We're going to go ahead and get started on our topic, and Rory's going to formally introduce herself. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So my name is Rory. Um, in addition to all the other things that Jill described, I am also our car seat tech down here, which means that you can come to me and I can help you figure out how to get the perfect fit of your vehicle with your car seats and get baby in there nice and safe. So today we're going to talk all about safety with babies and seats. So we wanted to start by saying first thing you're going to come across is that there's a wide variety of choices of seats when you are out there looking and you may not know what to put on your baby registry or which is the right seat for you. There's lots of options, right? The one that we normally see for our newborn infants is that rear facing only car seat and that's the one that's usually described as a bucket seat right and it clicks into a base in the car and then comes out and comes with you with the baby that's generally the one that most people find easiest to start with and then usually you're going to be switching up to a convertible car seat which most of those are going to be rear facing and then forward facing so you can do both of those with the same seat depending on the size and weight of your baby and height and all those good things and then as your child gets a little bit bigger some people will switch to a seat that either only faces forward and does a forward facing harness or that convertible car seat if you get an all-in-one might take you all the way up to booster stage and then you'll be in a booster until your child eventually outgrows and gets to sit in a seat like a grown-up. <laughs> yes. So it's a lot. It's quite a bit. You're definitely going to be potentially changing seats out. You could get a seat that will last you a good long while. Those are definitely really popular but kind of be aware and mindful as your child gets bigger and older, you may need to transition into different seats and that's all going to be beneficial for their safety. So definitely keep an eye on that. We also wanted to go on a little bit to how do we know that we have a good fit on the seat with our baby, right? Or with our kiddo. We just wanna make sure that they are nice and in there and snug, but not too tight. We wanna make sure that they don't have too many layers of clothes, right? But that they're still nice and comfortable. So generally speaking, when you're gonna put your kid in a car seat, we wanna make sure that they just have like, you know, normal layers that will keep them comfy. We don't want any bulky, bulky jackets. We don't want anything, no swaddles under the, Right, yeah. car seat straps, nothing Definitely. that potentially could add so much bulk that when you get into an accident, they compress against it and can slide out of the seat. When we're looking at a good fit, all of our seats here in the United States, they have the straps that go over the hips and then they come up the chest. And so all of them have a little chest clip here and we wanna make sure that when baby is all nice and fit in there, that that chest clip rests up on their chest. Usually the top of it is right about at their armpit level, right, their little tickle spot is what I like to call it. So <laughs> That's that, really cute. Yeah, so that you can kind of measure where that is. It's right on the chest. It's keeping the straps nice and in line. And then when you're pulling everything nice and tight, right, they're all going to have a strap to tighten and loosen the seat. You want to make sure that that strap is nice and tight. There's a thing called the pinch test, but a lot of us are starting to use something called the reverse pinch test, which is essentially you make sure you pull all the slack out of the hips, right, and then it's all up in the upper part. And then we're going to pinch the strap. And as we pull that extra slack out we want to get it to you just get to the point where you can no longer pinch the strap it's not too loose on baby but it's also not so tight that it's sort of compressing in or leaving marks we want to make sure also that when we have them in there that those straps are coming from the correct level so as long as our kids are rear facing we want to make sure that the straps are coming from at their shoulders or just below and that's really important for keeping them in the seat as their seat is moving back and forth in and accident and then when we switch them to forward facing that actually reverses and we want to keep the straps coming from at or just above there's a couple of car seats and manufacturers out there that have slightly different rules but that's sort of a general good rule to go by i will get a lot of questions or comments about what to do in the winter time i love that rory touched on this for sure about adding that bulk to baby and i know it's frustrating right off the bat we walk outside we put our kiddos in a jacket and then oh my gosh we get to the car and now we kind of have to take it off but just kind of be aware, just know that that affects them and we kind of need to do that. So whether we are kind of thinking about it more in depth, like maybe we put babies in their seats when we're in the garage where it's not so cold. So 
that transitions a little bit easier, but honestly, just be super careful with that as well. I know it's kind of an extra add-on, but definitely in the winter, make sure that jacket is off, especially here in Nevada. We don't really handle the cold very well. <laughs> So even though it's not too, too cold, we still have our kiddos and like those nice puffer vests and jackets. And that's what we're kind of accustomed to. Those ones are definitely the worst to put into car seats. They make it seem like your baby's so much bigger. And then if you notice you put baby in with that jacket and then you put baby in without that jacket, you will notice such a tremendous difference and such a space between your baby and the straps. And sometimes when you get that visual, you're kind of thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, like there was so much space right here. There's definitely a lot of room for baby to slide around and there's definitely not much that that car seat could be doing. For sure. Be careful as winter months are kind of approaching. That's my little add-on. Absolutely, <laughs> and a couple quick little tips that I've seen that can be really helpful is just keeping like a nice warm blanket in the car, yeah, right? Yeah. So that you have that right there. Or once you get kiddo in the car, you can actually put their jacket on reverse right oh, so that it so they're already that. in the seat and then you just slide their arms and yeah. the little arm things and then it's just nice and covering so them they're nice so and warm perfect how do you know that you got a good fit of the car seat in the car itself what you are looking for right we can install our seats by either what we call the lower anchors or by the seat belt right there's very few cars that you can install with both so the majority of seats you're going to be looking for an install with one or the other a lot of us think like if one is good two is better right. but that's not necessarily right. the case because it can change the dynamics of how the seat acts in a crash and make it a little too tight so that it doesn't take the impact um, from baby as it's moving in the crash so we want to install by one or the other you want to make sure that you have the correct belt path especially on some of these convertible seats you want to make sure that the straps are going if you're rear facing through the rear facing belt path and if it's forward facing through the forward facing belt path. If you're using the lower anchors, if you have a baby seat, you can use the lower anchors pretty much the whole time you're using that baby seat. But once you switch to convertible or other seats, our lower anchor system actually has a weight limit on it. Whereas the seat belt is designed to hold like a 200 pound human being, right? So we can use the seat belt for as long as we need to, but most of all the car seats will have a limit of once your child reaches 40 pounds, 45 pounds somewhere around there usually at that point you have to switch if you've been using that lower anchor system to latch it we need to take that out and switch to the seat belt and once you get everything nice and installed you make sure you've got it through any lock offs that are in the seat always consult the manual and reach out if you need help there's tons of great YouTube videos out there right you can always reach out to me um, and I'm happy to walk you through stuff but once you've got a nice good install what you're looking for is right along the belt path where that belt is going you want to not with like hulk strength but just kind of grab it and try to move it back and forth right and as long as it doesn't move more than an inch in any direction you are good to go and you've had a good install um with the baby seats we're a little more worried about like the angle of the seat so a lot of them will have either like a leveler to the ground mm -hmm. or they'll have a little bubble line and you always want to make sure you're following those as well if you are ever in a car accident it is really important to check kind of your manufacturer for your car seat kind of see what they say, what is their kind of requirement or regulation for that particular seat. A lot of the times you might have to do away with the car seat that was associated with the car accident. So always be aware of that. Definitely check with that manufacturer because every seat is different as well, but definitely be aware and be careful of that. And sometimes depending on type of insurance, your insurance will even potentially cover Ooh, the cost yes. of a new car That's seat. A good one. So yeah. always check all those things. <laughs> yes. So when do we change car seats, right? If we buy that bucket seat and we have our kiddo in it, all of the manuals are gonna say at this point, your child is too big for the seat, which for most of our rear facing only seats is gonna be when they're within about an inch of the top of the seat. So you just wanna kind of check and be aware if you're in a convertible seat, they'll have max height and weight as far as each direction's concerned. And usually they're getting really good at kind of putting that in nice bold print on there so that it's yeah. easier for yes. us as parents to yeah. read that and see what's going on. And some of the seats will have like funny rules. You have to remove certain pieces or you have to take out certain belt parts or switch, you know, the, the crotch buckle to the outer setting if you switch to forward facing. So always making sure that you are 
checking that manual over and over or reaching out to the manufacturer if you have any questions. Yeah. The last thing I kind of wanted for us to touch on is just to know that in each of our states, we have car seat laws. And here in Nevada, the laws will be changing as of January 1st, 2022. So coming right up in a couple months. And oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Yes, <laughs> it is. And so they're going to be changing to um, that all children who are six years of age and under and 57 inches or smaller need to be in some sort of a child restraint as well as we will be rear facing until at least two and just know that those are the law not necessarily best practice so best practice often means keeping our kiddos rear facing until they're sort of outgrowing the seat right and making sure that we're boosted until that they're really fitting in that seat belt well because at the end of this right really we're just trying to keep our kids as safe as possible yeah absolutely because we could have really small two-year-olds right that's really common all kids grow at different rates and i hate kind of limiting it to an age right so definitely just trust your gut kind of like if you know your kiddo is outgrowing it or needs a little bit more time kind of to be rear facing that's totally okay don't think that once they turn two we're like good to go just kind of be aware of your child's own growth and go from there for sure and i know lots of parents that will keep their kids in a harness strap a little longer right and look specifically for car seats that have higher height and weight limits just because they know that their kid is not going to be able to sit up nice and straight in the car mm -hmm. for those car rides that they're going to be you know leaning all over the place and not sitting properly in that seat belt so yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that is our little tidbit on car seat safety. I do want to add a really funny fact. If your kiddo is giving you a really hard time with kind of being in the seat, I know for my daughter, it sometimes helps when they're like visualizing something else as well. So something that I used to do when my daughter would give me a hard time is I would definitely get a baby doll and put the baby doll in a car seat. She loved that so much. And we would buckle up the baby doll right next to her and then she would be a lot more easier to manage to get her into the car seat as well so if you're a family where you have older siblings too where maybe your littlest one will see your older children kind of in boosters or sitting in the seat and they get really fussy sometimes just adding in like a little bit of like imagery of them kind of acknowledging that they have to be in the seat whether it is by like a baby doll or reading a book about it or watching a show or a movie and you point it out to them. You say, look, look at little Tommy in his car seat over there. And he's doing good, he's happy, he's safe, going about it that way because we want our kids to be safe. We want to avoid tears and tantrums. So definitely thinking outside the box of how to make that transition. So that's just my fun little fun fact, but we're pretty much good with car seat safety. Again, Rory handles all of our car seat checks so if you had any additional questions or wanted more information, I would definitely call the front desk to schedule a car seat check with her and we will get you nice and confident and comfortable. And we're so happy that you got to join us today. Please leave us a comment with any questions or concerns. Otherwise, definitely don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you so much and we hope you have a good day. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Awesome.